So far we have seen that uh, we can measure various uh, properties using engineering stress, engineering strain curve. Now we are going to discuss um, something called true stress, true strain curve. So before the, uh, discussing about the curve, we need to know what is true stress and uh, true strain. Okay, so the true stress is defined in the following manner. So this is the equation. So in the uh, engineering stress, okay, in the engineering stress, it's uh, denoted as S, right, and uh, it's the um, applied load per original area or the initial area. But the true stress is, which is equal to the applied load by the current area the current cross section area so that's what the true stress means okay and what is true strain true strain is um, it's like a change in length the, the engineering strain is change in length per original uh, length in the true strain it's like a, a change in length per original length of each increment okay such that if I have to measure the total true, true strain true, sorry total true strain from uh, for a particular stretch of the material it is equal to a ln of L by L naught okay in other words um, we could relate this epsilon which is the true strain with the conventional engineering strain in this formula okay so epsilon equal to ln of 1 plus e or e plus 1 okay so um, and uh, we could also relate uh, true stress with the engineering stress using this formula okay where uh, if we know the uh, engineering stress and we know the engineering strain we could measure what is the true strain sorry is true true stress similarly if we know the engineering strain we know what is the true strain okay um, as I mentioned earlier true strain is equal to ln of L by L naught but um, we know that um, L by L naught is equal to A naught by A, right? F because the uh, plastic deformation is a volume preserving deformation. Therefore, instead of L by L naught, we could also use A naught by A. So, epsilon is equal to ln of A naught by A. Uh, if we want to measure in terms of diameter, then it's 2 ln of d naught by d where this d naught is the initial diameter and d is the current diameter ok um, but if we uh, know the uh, if we could measure the true strain in terms of length why do we have to measure the true strain in terms of the area because if you recall the UTM machine, it's easy to measure the length rather than the cross-section area, isn't it? But there is a reason and the reason is once we um, go up to uh, the ultimate strength, if you notice the uh, stress-strain curve, the stress will start decreasing or the load will start decreasing. Okay, the reason it's happening is because at that time a phenomena called necking is happening. Okay, so it's happening once the material reaches the ultimate or maximum load. Okay, and until then the deformation is uniform, or the, the stretch is uniform. Okay. But once it reaches maximum loading and uh, the necking phenomena starts happening, 
then it's happening only at certain region of the specimen which is a local phenomena okay if you recall uh, we use uh, the engineering strain as an average strain with an assumption that deformation is uniform but after maximum blow the deformation is no more uniform at that time it is very appropriate if we measure in terms of, uh, if we measure the strain in terms of the change in cross section area rather than the change in length okay um, you, you will get to know um, this difference once we see one of the example okay so um, so now we know how to uh, measure uh, true stress and true strain using UTM machine and once we do that um, we will be able to obtain certain properties of the material and let's see what are those properties and yeah so uh, in this picture um, say if this is going to be the um, um, engineering stress versus engineering strain okay in that case what we will observe is this curve as the true stress true strain curve okay so if you see uh, in this curve um, this is one curve and this is another curve and these two curves are same from here to here which is an ultimate or the maximum load and after that there is a deviation this deviation is because uh, in this curve um, they have used the measure of strain as ln of l by l naught okay if we do that we will get this curve and if we do a correction for this nicking behavior okay then we will get this as the uh, corrected curve okay this is the corrected true stress true strain curve okay now let's see what other things we could measure from this true stress true strain curve one is what is the true stress at maximum load okay that we could measure because that's uh, one important property because when we um, deform the load, sorry, deform the structure, okay, uh, it's getting deformed permanently, but at the same time, um, the cross section area is also changing. And uh, once we reach this uh, ultimate true stress, then the necking sort of phenomena happens and it fails, right? So at that time what is the um, ultimate strength that's important that's one of the important property and therefore uh, we need to know and um, so as, as we defined uh, the true stress is equal to p by uh, the current cross-section area and true stress at ma maximum load is which is denoted as sigma u which is equal to p max divided by a u okay and um, yeah that's the uh, true stress and we know this one because this is original cross section area by p max and uh, um, so we know uh, what is the strain at um, the ultimate stress which is equal to ln a naught by a u so using this relation what i can do is i can write sigma u which is equal to s u into a naught by a u and from this relation i could write sigma u is equal to s u exponential to the power of epsilon u so this is not engineering strain this is exponential okay okay so that's how we could measure um, the true stress at maximum load and then true fracture stress so um, 
which means this stress or this stress okay what is the stress value of this point um, so in order to measure once again um, we need to know what is the um, load and then we need to know what is the um, sorry uh, yeah we need to know what is the load and do we need to know what is the cross section area so that we could measure so we know what is pf the stress at um, the fracture and uh, once the specimen has got broken we know what is the cross section area and with that we will be able to measure true fracture stress okay okay and then um, there's something called a true fracture strain okay true fracture strain is um, so we know that uh, fracture strain or engineering fracture strain which is equal to ln sorry not ln uh, it's just l minus l f minus l naught divided by l naught so here uh, we are using this relation epsilon f is equal to ln a naught by a f where a f is the final cross section area or the cross section area at fracture okay and we could relate this epsilon f with q the reduction in area using this formula okay because we know that um, a naught by af is equal to 1 by 1 minus q so using that relation we have obtained um, the relation between epsilon f and the reduction of area okay fine uh, i'll leave these two things uh, for you to read and uh, we'll go directly to some of the um, relation of this flow curve so um, now we have a stress strain curve and uh, sometimes uh, for some reasons um, we will come up with a relation for the true stress and true strain because uh, in the um, constitutive relation uh, we'll be using these um, relation between stresses and um, true stress and true strain and this relation is also known as flow curve okay and if we see uh, for many metals uh, one of the simplest uh, relation we could come up with is this power curve power curve relation okay and in this table we could see uh, for different materials what are these parameters the value n and k where this n is known as strain hardening component and k is the strength coefficient okay and um, yeah from stress strain curve we'll be able to obtain what is n and what is k which is um, yeah it is good i mean uh, for different um, so depends on n uh, how the uh, material behavior is going to be has been discussed over here okay right and now um, that is not the only relation there are many other relations possible one is this relation okay so what is this relation only i mean the only difference is instead of just epsilon we have put epsilon naught plus epsilon so what is this epsilon naught we can understand this epsilon naught as the um, um, the previous deformation uh, the deformation um, happened uh, prior to the uh, ten tension test because um, 
for a virgin material uh, it will have a particular yield value and at the same time um, if it has already gone through some plastic deformation the yield limit will be different some permanent uh, plastic deformation will be there and that permanent deformation is epsilon naught therefore that relation is slightly uh, modified with this epsilon naught okay and there are other um, relations as well and this relation is known as Ludwig equation okay and uh, if we see um, this is another relation and uh, these are just some uh, empirical relations it's not a, um, uh, a relation uh, which has been derived okay and depends on the stress strain curve we can come up with a relation okay now we'll see an example so if you see uh, in this example uh, a tensile test has been performed okay and in that tension test a metal has been uh, so it's been performed on a metal and it's been has got fractured uh, at maximum load which means um, it has an uh, the behavior is not like uh, it reaches the maximum load and then it came down for a while and then has got fracture it fracture at maximum load okay so which means uh, there isn't any uh, necking phenomena happened because necking phenomena happen only after maximum load right so from this what we can understand is um, since necking phenomena hasn't happened the uh, the deformation is uniform or the stretching is uniform okay so no local phenomena like necking has happened so there isn't any local deformation okay now um, so for such case the uh, condition at fracture were okay at fracture the cross section area the specimen is this and uh, the length is this okay and then the initial values the initial cross section area is this and uh, initial gauge length is this now calculate the true strain okay one is using uh, length and another one is using area so uh, using length this is the relation and uh, for that we are obtaining this as the value and using cross section area is this relation and if we see here this is the strain we are obtaining and if you notice this strain and this strain are same okay this strain and this strain will be same okay if the deformation is uniform but these two things will not be same if any local uh, deformation behavior like necking has occurred okay if you see uh, in the next example okay uh, this one a necking such a necking phenomena has happened uh, say uh, the final gauge length is 83 mm and the final diameter is 8 mm while L0 is 40 mm and D0 is 12.8 mm ok so for these uh, values if we measure epsilon f using length we will obtain a value of 0.73 but at the same time if you um, use um, the cross section area or in terms of the diameter we will get something else ok and this is more appropriate compared to this one ok so that is one thing we need to keep in mind ok so uh, in the next video we will discuss something called instability in tension ok thank you